Hmm. Blessings and blessings from Byron Bay, Australia. Uh, my name is Preston Smiles. For those of you who are potentially hearing and experiencing uh, me for the first time. Today's transmission comes off of the back end of a post I made about how mothers have accidentally wounded their sons by attempting to consciously and unconsciously teach out, beat out, punish out the aspects of the masculine that they are not comfortable with. Hmm. That post triggered some people. Because what we tend to do as humans is make it about us. And one of the things that I teach and stand by is awareness proceeds choice. Awareness has multiple layers and levels to it. And for those of you with children, particularly mothers who were triggered by this, I can see how the instantaneous gut-wrenching reaction based on all the work that you've been doing and putting into this child, the tireless work that doesn't get um, magnified per se. I could see how instantaneously you could take this personal and want to make it about you or better yet about me blaming mothers and want to discredit me and what I am attempting to bring to light. Now, let's even take that statement, bring to light. When we bring something to the light, we're, we're assuming that it's in the darkness. We're assuming that it's in the shadows. And this is true for me. Um, for those of you who've known, I, I, A, I've been a man, <laughs> what we would consider a man most of my life, or a young man, um, you know, to some degree. Uh, now, most of that time has not been from a conscious awareness or a integrated masculine or from a, what you would call a, you know, a powerhouse warrior king. Most of it has been, a lot of it has been from the wounded, uh, what some people label toxic masculinity. And, you know, as the researcher that I am, I began to do the work and continue to do the work on myself in es uh, es excavating, sort of digging out and looking at all the aspects of what um, keep me from being the unleashed, hmm, powerful, connected, deep, integrated, harmonized man that I truly am. And so, one of the things that I found is that one of the biggest first wounds that we ever have, first and foremost, we don't know a distinction between I and mom. We think that we are the same thing. And so if mom is tired, wounded, hurt, perceiving her job as mommy, to be something she doesn't necessarily want to do, or she sees um, aspects of the personality inside of her little boy that resemble the men who cheated on her, who raped her, who hurt or harmed her, then that mom may unconsciously attempt to remove those aspects from that little boy. Now the issue is, is that little kids, all of us are egocentric. Meaning, when something is not happening or going right, or if we perceive ourselves to be, uh, or, or we perceive something we're doing to be wrong, we don't equate that with the behavior, we equate that with ourselves, which then produces toxic shame. And toxic shame is, in so many ways, the most detrimental disease and virus of the mind that is happening on our planet. 
And so what, what, that, what, what that produces is a bunch of little nice guy boys, neutered little boys who have um, hmm, disconnected from their thump, from their, their masculine power, because it's been made wrong. You have a bunch of little, um, what's the word? Hmm, polite, well-to-do gentlemen that behind the scenes are raging and popping pills and disconnecting and masturbating to porn and doing any and everything they possibly can to feel again because hmm, when their nervous systems and their brains and their sense of being was being formed, who did they spend the most time with, mommy or daddy, traditionally? And thank you, mommy for doing that. Daddy was doing something else. He was doing the part he thought he should be doing, just like mommy was too. But the problem is, is that most of us are so unaware of this that we are babies raising babies. And that's not an issue if we are hmm, in alignment. It's an issue when I pass my wounded shit onto you and then you pass it on to your kids and their kids and their kids. And then we have this trail of wounded family. And so somebody made a comment about the patriarchy and I made a comment back. And for those of you who want me to be uh, one of those thought leaders who is uh, wishy-washy and soft and like um, only responds with like peace and blessings, you got the wrong person because I'm gonna re-question you. And so she said uh, something to the patriarchy and uh, women are suppressed and all of this stuff, which I don't disagree with. And my question to her is who raised the patriarchy? Where does it stop? This isn't about blame, this is about responsibility. Where does it stop? And what do we do about it? The work that I do, the work that I do in Man Cave and Conscious Man Brotherhood is about all of this and that's, I didn't make this up. This is something A, myself, have been being with for life. My mom, bless her beautiful, amazing heart, did the best she could with the tools and consciousness she had available. And because of her conversations about her dad and the lack thereof, she created a very responsible, <laughs> young man who um, became a people pleaser, who had a split personality. Ooh, catch it. Little Preston, around probably eight, nine years old, realized that it wasn't safe for him to be fully himself. And so what Little Preston did was he split and disassociated parts of himself until he got outside. When he got outside, he became what you would call an urban terrorist. He became somebody who wanted to dominate and experience his fucking man. He wanted to push his energy around and fight and spray paint and throw rocks and do everything he was not allowed to do because those things aren't safe. And so little Preston, guess where he decided to go when he had an opportunity when his parents got a divorce? Guess where he went with his dad? And his mother, oh, God bless her beautiful, amazing heart, because she is amazing, absolutely amazing. I would have never picked, I wouldn't pick another mother for, for anything. But that hurt her feelings. And now here we are, the 39-year-old, looking back at the 9-year-old, understanding why the nine-year-old made the decision to move with his father. He made that decision because he knew with his father he would be allowed to be more of himself. All of himself, no. But more of himself, yes. Our son, Kingston, right now has found his penis. He found his penis and he's going to it as much as possible. And because Alexi and I both have an awareness that we begin to get wounded 
very early on and his nervous system is forming, when he finds his penis, we don't get all reactionary and go, oh my God, what a shame. This is gonna mean this and this and this. So we better spank his hand and tell him, no, bad boy. No, we don't do that. We say, that's your penis. Period. That's it. And we move his hand and we put his diaper on. That's it. I'm gonna leave this space open for any questions or comments or anybody who wants to come in, come on live and have a, this conversation. Um, I do wanna say this, and please leave a comment if you wanna talk about anything. Someone um, mentioned a bunch of stuff like women in the 1960s and X, Y, and Z and equal pay and all of that stuff, and I am not refuting any of that. That is all true uh, to some degree. And men are in power in a man's world and a man's, 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 man's. And that's surface level power. That's power over, not power with. And power with is a whole, di it feels different in the body. How many of you guys type yes if you've ever experienced somebody who had the title and the money and all the things and yet they didn't appear to be free from the inside out. They had all the stuff. They looked like they were powerful, and yet they were actually living in hell with all their mansions and cars and whatever else they have, or the title of CEO, or whatever conversation you may have. And so we perceive, like, like, like I was telling somebody this because I'm, I'm going to be in, interviewed for this documentary around money. I was speaking about how when I went to Africa and went in the bush, and met some of these people who we would call poor. But I didn't experience them as poor and they didn't experience themselves as poor. They held themselves as kings and queens. And so we look from the Western world and say, poor them, they got it bad. But being in their energy, I realized that if I was them, I'd be looking at us going, poor them. They got all the cars and money and all the toys, and yet they're disconnected from their own hearts, their own truth, their own community, their own understanding of God and the source that never made a mistake, including in them. So you tell me who's really poor. And so for these, those of you experiencing um, a level of the patriarchy is holding us all down, it's the same thing black people could say about white people. It's the same thing black women can say about white women. It's the same thing the fucking dolphins can say about the, the, the elephants. Everybody's transitioning right now. There's a changing of the guard and it has less to do with the patriarchy and the matriarchy and more to do with waking up to the conversations we have not been having or allowing ourselves to truly see. Hmm. Mm hmm. So, unless any of you want to come on, and I see your comment, I don't know how to say your name, Denlin. Um, you had a lot, of, a lot to say, and. Um, nothing wrong with having a lot to say. I just remind people that my space is one of respect. And if I perceive someone to be disrespecting me, sometimes I just ignore it. And sometimes I fire back. And with you, I made a decision to fire back. I have no hatred towards you. Um, I genuinely have nothing but love for you and for anybody else who was triggered by that post. Um, I think that we get in a conversation, we say and we know the distinction of seek first to understand and then un to be understood. But most of us are so caught up in our own personal lives that we have a hard time actually embodying that. And um, my intention for that post and this one as well is to open up a conversation that maybe you guys can't see. 
It's multi-layered and all of us are in this together. The work that I do with men is not about bashing women in any sense of the word. It's about inviting men to step up and step in and understand some of their deep wounding and their deep programming that has not allowed them to really unleash themselves in such a way where they can simultaneously be in their power and be a fucking mess. Mm. That, that is true power in my opinion. And so, mm, I think that's it. For those of you who received value from this, I ask that you tag somebody, share it, do whatever. Maybe don't do any of that. Um, but I think it was a necessary conversation and there's more to it and it goes deeper. Um, my mom and you as mothers are all doing the best you can. And I just ask you, my sister mentioned this in the comments, and this is so right on. Some women have the experience of dating men who are not mm, what you would call emotionally available. And so if you happen to have a little boy, then two things usually happen. Either you try to have that little boy be so emotionally available that he uh, becomes effeminate in his way of being, or we go the other way and we try to beat it out of him unconsciously, right? Big boys do cry, don't cry. Stop being a little pussy, a little wussy, a little faggot. These are the things little boys hear on the playground from other boys, and we unconsciously perceive that from our mothers. And, hmm, if you happen to be raising a little boy by yourself, to some degree, and your partner, whoever you had uh, made this child with, isn't showing up, and your son or daughter, son, hears you speaking about that person in an ill fashion, then that, your son will start to perceive daddy is bad and wrong because he left us. And whatever daddy does and has been doing, if mommy says daddy was too flashy, then I won't ever buy anything or, or, or be what we would call flashy. If daddy was the opposite and so frugal, then I'll do the opposite. Your son is unconsciously trying to get your love. And in doing so, is going to fill up whatever area you need as a mother as a, as, a, as a woman, because outside of, right? So there's a, and I'm gonna finish this real quick, but outside of like the first four months of a kid's life, he doesn't know a difference. There is no separation. And so we need the eye contact. We need the mirroring. We need when you're breastfeeding, if you can do that, to, to, to send love, right? And it's, it's outside of a schedule because if you're feeding your kid only on a schedule, which I get some of you have to do, that kid is gonna perceive that, he gets it. I'm crying for milk, I want mommy, I want milk, I want this thing, and it's, this thing is not readily available, it's only based on time, Whew. wounds, right? And so, uh, damn it, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, yes, there we go, and then, after four months, he begins to notice himself as a, as a separate, as an other. Like, ah, oh, I am me, and that is mommy. We are hmm, social beings that need each other. And we, it's hardwired into our system to seek approval. Now, initially, it's outside of ourselves because we depend on our parents for food and love and water. And so, if mommy consciously or subconsciously has an issue, if I want her approval and I want her love, then I'm gonna try my best to do the opposite of anything that she dislikes. And so, this is why I use the word accidentally wounded you in my posts.
Because I don't think mothers purposely try to send their little boys in a direction of disowning their own masculine. It is a physical, emotional, and spiritual impossibility for a woman to teach a man how to be a man. Because we're not the same creatures. <laughs> that may trigger some of you as well. Some of you may understand that. As much if we have a daughter, if we're blessed to have a daughter, as much as I want to teach her how to be a woman, I can't do that. What I can do is show her a healthy relationship with a man and the masculine, such that when she decides to date, if she does, and she decides that she wants to date men, she may want to date women or whoever she wants to date, but if she decides she wants to date men, then she um, will have our relationship as a backdrop for what that may look like. And yes, it's implied that we're equal. We're definitely equal. Um, However, um, yeah, yeah. Sean said, my mother was seemingly emotionally distant and still, to, still is to a point. Yeah, Sean, that can be very tough. Um, I was working with a client recently who's, he, he was watching me kiss and tell Kingston I love him. And I was kissing on Kingston so much and just like loving on him. And he said, you know what? I'm 27 years old and my dad still hasn't done that with me. He's never told me he loves me. He's never held me and said, and kissed me and, and like looked at me in adoration. And to me, this is ginormous. Like we need that. We need it. Um, Caroline said, how do you suggest we face our unconscious slash subconscious dysfunctions? Uh, I feel like I need more therapy than I can afford. Yes. Um, awareness. Questioning everything. Like, everything that isn't of course. Everything that becomes an of course for you. Of course a man should. Of course a woman should. Of course you spare the rod, you spare the child, right? So we use the Bible as a way to um, essentially abuse children. To enforce our will on a little kid which breaks their autonomy and makes them, puts them in a position. My parents did this and I don't blame them, but they did this unconsciously on accident, using the Bible as a backdrop. I've seen it happen. A two-year-old, a three-year-old, a one-year-old needs to have their opinions respected does it mean that they get their way every fucking time? No. But if my child, if I say, don't go there, and Kingston decides to go over there, as a one and two year old, I need to be very careful with how I treat that. If I take him and beat him or spank him or put him on punishment, and force my will on him. And I keep doing that. Every time he does anything that is outside of what I say is and isn't okay, I am setting him up to be deeply wounded as an adult. I'm stunting his growth if I do that. Now, catch the caveat. I'm not saying a kid should run your house or run you. What I am saying is that children especially during the time when their nervous systems and their whole world is being formed, their mental maps of the world are being formed, need a level of aut autonomy, a level of, ah, I am respected here. I put his hat on today and he took his hat off. I put his hat back on him and he took it back off. Kingston was telling me I don't want to wear a hat. If I, as his dad, because the sun is beating down pretty hard here in Australia, force my will on my child in that moment, And I continuously do that without making compromise like I would with any other like sentient, powerful being. Just because he's smaller doesn't mean he's less worthy. His opinions matter too. 
Are you guys catching this? This is some deep stuff here. And some of you were raised in households where your opinion didn't matter. And so you're a 37-year-old, 40-year-old, 27-year-old who's stunted, who's walking around like a nine-year-old, throwing tantrums and wanting to harm and hurt yourself because you're never good enough. Whew. This stuff is deep. Um, if, if you guys don't have any other comments or anything, I'm going to get off because uh, I got a, a call with a client actually pretty soon who was on here. Uh, yeah. This stuff is deep. So I'm going to leave it there. Love you guys. Blessings and blessings. I hope this resonated and helped in any way. I know it's a heavy subject. Um, uh, I see. There we go. Here comes the comments. Absolutely, I do my best uh, to hear out my kids' perspectives and thoughts about wherever, whatever is up for them. Uh, the Bible, yep. Um, huge cloak for enormous amount of error. The will of God, the word of God, blasphemous. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. It really is. Um, I'm just going to read a few more of these comments. Um, Kingston is lucky to have you as a dad. And I'm lucky to have him as a son because he's teaching me every step of the way. Um, you're really getting deep. Kingston is blessed to have you. Thank you so much. Um, totally holding my little boy now, thinking I would love his dad to watch this. Yeah, send it to him, please. Um, all right, I'm actually really out this time. Love you guys. Thank you guys for sticking in, whoever did actually listen to this um and like i said if it if it resonated or if you want to send it to somebody please do peace